and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same way they always wear. <laughs> Big <laughs> Hello dear gamers, Yorkfield here and today we are back for the third part of my playthrough on Doki Doki Literature Club. So last time, remember, we wrote a poem, we showed it to Sayuri and Natsuki and now we're gonna show it to the two other characters of the Literature Club. I think it was Yuri and Monica. Okay, without further ado, let's continue our adventure in the Literature Club. Okay, so yeah. Yuri and Monica were left to show the poem. I'm gonna do Monica last since she's the leader of the uh, literature club. So I'm gonna show Yuri. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh. S sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that might it might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad? No. Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I didn't really notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very de deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all, all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased though, I don't know how to pronounce it. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry, it's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which is itself kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Okay, Ghost Under the Light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bad thing, it must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of line. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bath. Calms be breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Wow, that was one of the hardest poems to read since, you know, the writing, I'm not used to read like that, but okay. I I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. Oh, okay, what? I wasn't thinking that at all. 
Um, a little bit, to be honest. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I, I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I, just, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Haha. <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Yorkfield. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go in the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting in that, it that away. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember, it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Hi, Yorkfield. Having a good time so far? Ah, uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the floor until until I'm more settled up. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah ha ha Don't worry, Yorkfield. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all get to learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mmm. I like it, Yorkfield. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Ah ha ha ha. Oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So, so take that as a compliment. Ah ha ha. If you say so. Yep. By any chance, you you read anything by Shel Silverstein? Eh? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might be even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that you would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get to get me the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure it will end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little based toward their own kinds of styles, but I always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ahaha. <laughs> Ahaha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall, it couldn't have been me. See the directions in the sparkle. Protrudes, protrudes, a noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend, I'll never know, it was, I wasn't home, I peer inside for a clue, no, I can't see, I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun, but it's too late, my retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image, it's just a little hole, it wasn't too bright, 
it was too deep, stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices, I realized how, realized how I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Aha, uh -huh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of stuff has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say... I guess you could say that I had some kind of infinity recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone's judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. <laughs> I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayuri and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange the sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of the expressions, expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yudi smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh. Um, did you say something? Oh, nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be that? How can that be cute? I I know that. I just mean the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but I really didn't come out nice at all. Um. Well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions. I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayuri liked it, and Yorkfield did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mmm, and Yorkville liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? Oh my god, the music just cut. I didn't realize you weren't so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh... You, you just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just... Jealous that Yorkville appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that fool of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh... uh um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Yorkville started showing up. <laughs> Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... 
This doesn't involve you. I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they noticed I was just standing there. Yorkfield, she, she just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Yorkfield. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. Do you understand that, right, Yorkfield? Um... Well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like, it's not like I know anything about writing, but who, whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... Uh... I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say, help me, Sayori. Natsuki? Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri? But Yuri's expression is also de so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori. Eh? Yeah? Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Yorkfield? Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. What the? Oh no. She would never. It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes... STOP! Natsuki, Yuri! You guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are our wonderful people. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they are amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? B because... Well... Also... Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs at the same way they always wear. <laughs> Big <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Wow. I'm definitely laughing more than I have expected, though. Sayori? Sayori stands trumpently. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. <laughs> I think she got embarrassed. <laughs> Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing to me. Ahaha. Ha. Nah. It's not like I'm, I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well... I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can't count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to not. <laughs> I don't know even- I don't really know what not means. I'll search that online and I'll put it on the screen. Such a genuine person really does make a good president regardless of what she says. If I only could get the chance to talk with her a little more. Okay everyone, 
It's just about me. Time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was a rot, well, mostly. York Phil, how about you? Yeah, I'll say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you'll learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those who I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Yorkfield! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go! Eh... Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori? About what happened earlier? Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no! That's the, really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promised they were both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Yorkfield. It's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <clears throat> Every day is going to be so much fun. Sigh. It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught onto the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Thank you so much guys for watching the part 3 of Doki Doki Literature Club or DDLC for short. We will be back very very soon in part 4. And I apologize if I didn't upload much normal videos except shorts in the last few days. It's because I've been busy with a lot of things around. I'm not gonna tell what because it's private. It's personal, so yeah. But I, I promise I will try to upload at least every three to four days if I can. Either normal videos or shorts. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Stay safe, take care, peace, bye!